Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here from Moss Pawn and Gun. And uh, today we've got another nice little mill syrup review for you. We're going to be shooting the uh, Mauser Model 7184. Uh, this is a very, very interesting uh, period of military history that this rifle comes from. I'm not going to get into too many details on the conflicts it was used in and everything like that. Uh, but it's a very early Mauser rifle. Uh, the Model 1871 came about, of course, in 71. Uh, the 84 part of the designation means that it was converted to a uh, magazine-fed rifle in 1884. Uh, so this definitely predates any Mauser rifle that is a smokeless rifle. Um, it's an eight-shot tubular-fed, um, basically feeds from a magazine below the uh, below the barrel. Um, has a lifting mechanism, you know, not unlike uh, what is found on many Winchester rifles. Uh, it's a very obscure bolt-action rifle. Um, 11 millimeter Mauser, so it's uh, essentially uh, about a 340 grain projectile traveling at a uh, reasonable speed. I think they're getting out at around uh, 15, 1600 feet a second. Uh, the original loading, of course, is a black powder loading, although later they did have a reduced smokeless charge that they ran in some of the, the later guns. Uh, these guns did see service as late as World War I uh, in various uh, roles, combat roles. Um, so they've definitely proven themselves well over the years. A uh, very classic uh, European military rifle. Of course, extremely obscure. Uh, it's not the kind of gun you really get to see uh, being shot every day. Um, just to have one in firing condition is kind of a cool thing to have laying around. Um, in terms of the investment required to shoot them, uh, again, just like many of my other videos, uh, the price that you're going to spend to shoot this gun is going to be pretty much in line with what you pay for the gun. Um, these guns can generally be had uh, anywhere from, you know, a beater you can get for around $400. Uh, some of the nicer examples can fetch, of course, up to, you know, $1,200, $1,300, even up to two grand if it's a rare enough gun. Uh, now, this particular gun, uh, because of the markings that are on it, the Prussian unit markings, um, this gun has most certainly seen combat. So it's really interesting to get to hold a piece of history that, for one, you get to shoot, um, but also you know that it's seen some history, it's seen some combat, and to think that this gun at some point has been firing shots in anger at people, um, it's definitely an interesting fact. Uh, the fact that, you know, they are older rifles, they've been around the block a time or two, and for me that just means a lot. Uh, for, you know, surplus rifles, it's just something I've always been, you know, into a lot. So the fact that we've uh, been able to get it talking again and the gun is functional and shoots well, it's just a testament to the quality um, that the Mauser factories always put into their rifles, even to this day. Um, it is a turn bolt, uh, bolt action rifle, lifting mechanism, lifts the rounds out of the magazine up into the chamber. Um, it's got tangent sights with the typical um, sighting arrangement that you would expect on most all military rifles. Um, but other than that, pretty much your standard fare. Uh, it's just very obscure. Um, there's not really a whole lot of videos out there of people firing these things. Uh, it's not a very common rifle. Um, you know, the even earlier versions, as I mentioned, the 1871, is a single shot rifle. So if you ever see one of these and it's a single shot only, it's a lot more rare than one of the ones that's converted to a repeater. Now, uh, you know, at the time, uh, a lot of armies, you know, in the, in the late 1870s, a lot of armies were starting to get repeating rifles. So the one way that they were able to keep up is by converting existing 1871s to repeaters in the 1880s and that was a way that they could keep up with all the other armies that had repeating rifles. Um, because really it's no different than it is today. You look at military technology. If you're going to take on a force, you want your technology to exceed theirs. If you can double their firepower, double their manpower. And the thought process was no different back then. Um, these rifles were certainly used for volley fire, long range fire. Of course, you know, just having the extra rounds available to you. Um, like many military rifles of the era, this gun does have a magazine cutoff, and the whole point was that you could run it as a single shot by using the magazine cutoff, and then have your whole magazine in reserve uh, to be able to load it, I guess, in duress, or if you really need to get a lot of rounds down range quickly, you have those rounds in reserve. The guns are full of history, and we can't wait to shoot this thing some more for you today. Hopefully, we'll be able to connect with some of our targets here. Let's have some fun and uh, make this little girl talk again.
Oh yeah, slinging them right in there. Boy, it's not missing by much. Definitely not the smoothest bolt in the world. Man. Oh, I'm shooting over it. That's what I'm doing. All those shots I missed, I was shooting right over the gong. I'll be dang, I wasn't aiming quite low enough. So bring my bullseye hole down just a hair. All right, I think I know where we need to put them now. All right, well, I'm gonna take a few shots with this rifle at uh, about 250 yards, just to see if it's a little bit more consistent at that range. Eric got a couple of hits on the gong at 325, but um, just really to test the practical accuracy of this rifle, we're gonna take a few shots at 250 and maybe a couple at uh, about 100, maybe down to 200 yards. Um, that's one thing that we do in these videos is we like to test the practical accuracy of these kind of guns. Um, if you guys, do want to see some of these rifles printed on paper, uh, we can accommodate that. Just let us know down in the comment section. Um, we normally just come out here and shoot steel, um, you know, recently, but get one more in there. If you guys ever want to see anything like that, just let us know. All right, let's take a few shots at 250. Ooh, just under, I saw the dirt kick up. Let's bring our point up just a tiny bit. Just under it again. Well, it's definitely all in there. That shot hit a little bit to the right. Same spot. Try to shot it at 100 here just to see if it's even on. Hitting way to the right. All right, I'm gonna shoot the gun a couple of more times for you. We're not gonna shoot a terrible amount at this distance because uh, this ammo is very expensive. Certainly worth it though. All right, see if I can hit a few things. All right, I'm gonna try 18 by 24 at about 100. Should be able to connect with that, no problem. Oh yeah. All right, let's try our D28 at 250. Actually, it's about maybe 150 at this distance. All right, let's try our big round gong at 200.
Ooh, just under it. Let's try that again. One more time for good measure. Oh, all right, let's try our, uh, got a three liter soda bottle set up down there. Let's see if I can nail that. Kind of tiny, it's about a hundred, eh, about a hundred yards away. It's certainly hard to hit small point targets with this thing at any range because the sights are so crude. Uh, but I tell you what, for, you know, when this rifle was made, it certainly is a well-made gun. You can tell, I mean, the trigger's really nice on it. Um, very smooth action for the most part. Um, certainly no excuse. I'm sure with a little bit more time behind it, it could be a lot better shot with it. Um, it certainly is a gun that takes a little bit of getting used to, but uh, it is awesome, I'll tell you that much. Let's try our, uh, well, heck, let's go for our 200 yard gong again, why not? God dang it. There it is. Cool. A little low, I think. It's definitely slinging them in there. Dang. Let's try something a little bit closer. Maybe I've got the wrong point of aim here. All right, I think I know where to aim now. Let's try that again. Can't quite seem to connect with that long gong there, but let's give it another try. Load up a few more rounds. There we go. Ooh, just in the dirt. Little thing shooting pretty good for the most part today.
Oh, right beside it. Now this gun has just been shooting pretty decent today. We've gotten some pretty good accuracy out of it. You know, just bear in mind it is an old rifle and you know, it's gonna have its limitations, but as with any gun, as long as you know the firearms limitations, you're really gonna get some decent results if you do your part. All right, a couple more here. All right, last round's a charm. Come on, gong. Ah. Well, guys, we appreciate you watching our video today. These old rifles are a ton of fun to shoot. And uh, it's just a great chance to get out and shoot a real piece of history and to make some of these older firearms talk again. Um, you know, the fact that we were, you know, lobbing those rounds in on that 325 yard gong so consistently, um, these rifles are just so well made. They're a classic piece of military history. And uh, also just the, the fine European craftsmanship uh, that goes into their manufacture. It really is just an A-class Mauser rifle that is just really hard to beat. Uh, so we appreciate you watching today. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Check out all our other videos. I mean, we've got a ton of great Milsert footage. Uh, if you guys are into old guns like I am, uh, I can't get enough of them. So uh, we definitely invite you guys to comment, subscribe, rate, um, you know, send in all your requests, questions. Um, if there's a special rifle that you want to see um, shot on our channel, um, something weird, obscure, uh, we don't mind doing it. Just send us a request and we'll try to make it happen. Have a good day and thanks for watching.